Hi class, let's talk about cells. First of all, I want to show you these pictures, which are actually pretty cool. They're all different types of cells. And I actually took them in a college um, cellular imaging course by a technique called fluorescence microscopy, where we add certain dyes that fluoresce under the light of the microscope, and then you take a quick picture of it before it fades. So they're pretty cool. Again, they're, I mean, I'm an amateur, so some of them aren't very good. Um, this, this middle one, okay, I didn't take myself, but I did take all the rest. So this is a prof probably a professional one, who's somebody who does, this, does it for a living. But I, hey, these aren't too bad either. And so when we look at the cell's anatomy, I want to review the different cell parts and what the cell parts do. A lot of times we'll talk about how cells function as a factory, and we're going to get to that. First of all, I want to talk about what the cell theory states. You may remember some guys from the 16 and 1700s. The first one was Robert Hooke, the guy, the court guy who looked at it under a microscope. Then there was uh, Anton von Leeuwenhoek, and then there was... Um, Matthias Schleiden, Theodore Schwann, and Rudolf Virchow, the guys who actually did a lot of research, and their research led to the eventual cell theory, in which states that all living things are made of at least one or more cells, that cells are the basic unit of all life, and that all cells have to come from pre-existing cells through cell division. And so when we look at, I mean, we have unicellular organisms right here. This top picture is showing different protists, which are single-celled organisms and they have a nucleus. And then down over here, this is actually a developing zygote. It was just fertilized, and now it's undergoing cell division so um, to become a, an eventual embryo. And so it went from one cell to two cells and eventually four cells and more. And so this is actually a sea urchin embryo. Let's look at cells and the fact that we really can't see them with the unaided eye. The only ones that we could really see are egg cells and so this is the ostrich egg, the largest visible single cell on the planet in comparison to the chicken egg. Down here these are actually frog eggs so we could see amphibian eggs as well or um, um, different reptiles like snakes or turtles. But when we look at them, we really need the aid of a light microscope, or even better, the electron microscope. And there are a couple different types of electron microscopes, the transmission and the scanning electron microscopes that help, help us see really, really small stuff. But for our purposes, we will be using the light microscope to see our normal everyday cells, and even bacterial cells. Looking at cells, we're going to talk about, again, review. There are two main different types of cells. There's two different categories. We have prokaryotic cells and we have eukaryotic cells. A prokaryotic cell is only bacteria. Those are the only types of organisms that are prokaryotic. What does that mean? Well, it pretty much means that it doesn't have a nucleus or any of those cell parts inside of it. On the other hand, we have eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells include animals, plants, protists, and fungi. And so these are our four different categories of eukaryotic cells. And that all means that, okay, there's a nucleus and there's all these fun little guys inside called organelles that help the cell function and do its job. Either way, prokaryotic or eukaryotic cells, all cells have certain things in common. The first thing they have in common is that they have a plasma membrane or a cell membrane on the outside. Or if you're a prokaryotic cell, or if you're not an animal cell, I should say, it's on the inside of the cell wall. Um, so all cells have a cell membrane. All cells have cytoplasm, which is the fluid-like interior of the cell. All cells have genetic material, such as DNA and RNA. All cells have ribosomes, which help make proteins, which all cells make. That's their main function. And all cells also have also have a sort of a skeleton so called cytoskeleton that gives shape and form to the to the and some protection to the different cells. Prokaryotic cells size-wise are much smaller than eukaryotic cells. I know that this picture shows them about the same size, but again, this is a micrometer. These are much larger than bacterial cells. This kind of shows a size difference. This is actually just a fraction of a eukaryotic cell. And then we have our prokaryotic bacterial cell. And they're even showing a virus right here. Viruses are not cells. They are not living, in fact. They have some living characteristics, but not enough to be considered living organisms. They feed on living organisms as their hosts, though. So we're going to talk about viruses when we get to the immune, immune system. 
And this is an electron micrograph. This is a scanning electron micrograph of bacteria in the yellow and a white blood cell which eats bacteria in the pink color. Cells come in different sizes and shapes because they have different jobs. And when cells eventually get a different job, all cells start off as stem cells. Stem cells are pretty much the cells that make up an embryo. Eventually when they form the fetus or the um, or they develop into different parts, we call that cell differentiation. Cell differentiation, I'll spell it T-I-F-F-R-N-G-A-T-I-O-N, it's a big word. It just means that they have specialized in the fact that they now have a specific job to do for the rest of their existence. So stem cells could become, there's blood cells, skin cells, bone cells, muscle cells. Um, these are epithelial or skin cells. Uh, nerve cells, etc. So there's lots of different types of cells in the body and they will differentiate into the certain cell that they will be based on usually location during development and what their DNA tells them to become as well. Let's go over the different parts of the cell. You should have a picture that looks very similar to this but yours is unlabeled. So let's go through the different parts of the cell and remind you what they do. Oops, wrong way. Let's start down here with the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane, also known as a cell membrane, is pretty much a phospholipid bilayer. It's made out of a certain type of fat. And there's also these things inside of it called membrane proteins that act as gateways to allow stuff in or out of the cell. So cell membrane will control what goes in and out of the cell, and all cells have a cell membrane. Second thing I want to talk about is the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm all cells have. It's a semi-fluid liquid interior and it contains all the organelles and even the nucleus and it also it helps to regulate certain pHs and certain chemical the chemical um, components necessary for chemical reactions to happen within there. It also could transport different stuff. Kind of protects it as well. So the cytoplasm is a fluidy interior that gives some protection to the cell. Next part that all cells have is a cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton are made of microscopic tubes and filaments. It's sort of like a lattice work that gives certain shape and even allows things to move with inside the cell, acts sort of like as a highway or freeway system to transport stuff. And so the cytoskeleton, there are different parts, filaments holding the cell together and upright and give it a, giving it a certain shape. Okay, let's go over to the boss of the eukaryotic cell. The boss of the eukaryotic cell is a nucleus, and so the nucleus contains the genetic material, which is the blueprints or the instructions for everything about life. So it's a command center of the cell. Now the nucleus has a few parts. The center part is nucleolus. The nucleolus actually makes um, ribosomes, and it also makes the RNA as well. So the ribosomes are the ones that make proteins. They're made in the nucleolus. Then the nucleus is protected by this outside membrane called a nuclear envelope or a nuclear membrane. And it's a double, it's a double membrane and it has holes in it called nuclear pores that allow things to go in and out. Things that are smaller than DNA because DNA cannot fit outside of those holes. So it allows for communication in and out. The next thing on the outside of this the nucleus, we have this flattened sort of membranous network called endoplasmic reticulum. And there's two types of endoplasmic reticulum, or ER. There's rough ER, which is connected to the nucleus, and it's rough because it has these dots on it. Those dots are ribosomes. Ribosomes, their main job is to make proteins. That's called protein synthesis. Proteins are the things that, it's the main job of a cell. If a cell was a factory, and if you went to a shoe factory, they make shoes. If you go to a cell factory, they make proteins. And ribosomes are the workers who do that job. But the rough ER is sort of like a conveyor system in which they collect the proteins and they will eventually ship them out to where they need to go. But the ribosomes are kind of stuck on them, which gives it a rough appearance. And then we have its counterpart, smooth ER, which is, you can see it's a little bit more tubular around like on the outside of the rough ER. They don't have ribosomes on them, and they're really good at detoxifying and making lipids that are important in the cells. And then we have our mitochondria. Our mitochondria are very important for energy production. They make ATP 
which is our energy by a process called cellular respiration. And so that's how we get our energy source. We have these things called vesicles. Vesicles are these little kind of bubbles floating around. And these vesicles, and you can see one forming right here, stuff kind of goes into them. It's sort of a chaperone. Things aren't allowed to travel within the cell without a chaperone. And it's kind of a lipid membrane that surrounds whatever's coming into or out of the cell. And that's what they do. They transport stuff and they release materials throughout the cell. The next one is a lysosome. A lysosome is pretty much a specialized vesicle and it's special because it has these special digestive enzymes inside of it that break down foreign invaders or different things that aren't supposed to be there. So they are kind of like the maintenance crew. They get rid of things and break stuff down that's old broken organelles they, they'll digest. The next one is the Golgi apparatus, so the Golgi complex. So the ribosomes make the proteins here, and then a vesicle will ship them over to the, from the rough ER to the, to the um, Golgi apparatus. The Golgi sort of acts like a UPS packaging center. So they send a package of proteins to the Golgi. The Golgi will ship it and sort it and package it and label it, and then it will send it out to where it needs to go. And so the Golgi apparatus is like a shipping department. And did I forget anything? There are peroxisomes, which produce hydrogen peroxide, which is toxic, and then it's broken down by this enzyme called catalase. But uh, peroxisomes are kind of similar to lysosomes, as in they, they contain special enzymes to get rid of harmful stuff in the body. Oh, don't forget about the centrioles. The centrioles are usually found in pairs next to the nucleus. So here they are, and they're important because they help cells divide and during mitosis and even meiosis. And they're only found in animal cells, which we are, so we have them. So these are the main parts of a eukaryotic animal cell, plant cells and bacterial cells and even fungi cells. You can talk about cell walls and chloroplasts and other parts, but because this is a human body course, we're only gonna talk about the animal cell, which is eukaryotic, and this is it. However, when you look at different cells, I mean, I didn't talk about the flagellum, or the flag if flagella is more than one, but here it is, and it allows cells to move, like on a sperm cell. And so, I mean, these are just very generalized cells with the major parts of them that I want you to know and understand. And so all cell parts work together in order to make the proteins. The instructions are found in the nucleus with the DNA. The DNA instructions go out to the ribosomes. The ribosomes make the proteins, which get shipped out to the Golgi. The Golgi packages them and ships them out into different places in or outside of the cell where they need to go. So it all works together like a well-oiled machine. And I hope this was helpful, and I hope you remember the different parts of a cell.